Hey guys, today we're going to be working with the TD Ameritrade API. This is a pretty good API for getting stock market information. They also recently went commission free for trading, which is nice too. You'll need to make an account to get an API key, which I'll go over in the intro video. I'll put a link somewhere in the description, but it's pretty straightforward. You just do register and you have to create an app. Anyways, today we're going to be working on price history, starting with something pretty simple, not too complicated. And I've also broken this up into functions, and each function has its own file. I feel like that'll work a lot better, perhaps, than hard coding it or creating classes. I'm also going to upload this whole project onto GitHub. I'll put a link in the description for you there too. If you guys are feeling lazy or just want to check it out, but I would still recommend going through and learning it, otherwise it's just going to be a headache later on. But anyways, let's start. So. To start, we're just going to do import requests, and because since this is an API, it's going to be pretty useful. We're going to make a simple function. Let's just call it get price history, if I can spell it right. Get price history, and for now, I'm just going to put pass. So basically, we're just making a function that's going to get the price history. Yeah, pretty pretty self-evident. We're going to make it though, so we can put as many arguments as we want, and we do that by putting key wargs here, or keyword arguments here. Next, we are going to give this whole thing a URL to use. We're just gonna do URL equals, and we're gonna get this URL from the website, so let me pull that back up. Okay, so this is the resource URL. We're just gonna copy this whole thing, and we're going to paste that in there, and we're gonna get rid of this apple here, though. And yours might say something different, just get rid of the thing between market data and price history, and we're going to use format and we're just gonna do keywords I cannot spell today keywords .get and symbol and this will make sense later because symbol is gonna be one of these keyword arguments we're gonna format this and basically this symbol is going to go here all right perfect so next we're going to create parameters so let's just do params equals an empty dictionary um, I guess first we would want to Give this, uh, give this our API key, and we're gonna do that by doing params.update, and we're going to give it the API key. So API key semicolon or colon, my bad. <laughs> and we're just gonna give it key, and we don't have a key yet, so let's go create that key equals, and you get your key by going here, and you're going to click this box, and it's. Usually, I, I'm not doing it here because I've already done it, but it's gonna say, give you a drop down of your apps and you just click on the app that you created, which I'll be going over in the intro video, which I haven't actually posted yet. But it'll be there, it'll just give you a long string that represents your API key. You're just gonna do that, you're gonna do copy, and you're just gonna paste it in here, and it's gonna just be something like that. But I've already done that, so I'm not doing it this time. All right, so, so far so good. Next, we need to actually fill this parameters dictionary with parameters. <laughs> so an easy way to do that is through this function, um, which is why I left it open for the unlimited variables. So we're just gonna create a for loop. So we're gonna do for arg, for argument in keywords, <laughs> colon, parameter equals a dictionary and in this dictionary it's going to be argument colon keywords dot get arg so what this is doing is it's creating a variable called parameter and it's a dictionary variable and the key is going to be the argument up here and it's going to get the value of that argument so each argument is you know what it it'll, it all makes sense like Basically, each argument up here is going to have a key and a value, and we're just getting that with this right here. All right, looks good so far. And we're gonna want to update our parameters dictionary with the parameter, so to do that, we're gonna do params.update, and we're just gonna pass in parameter right here. So now for every argument in this function, it's going to grab the argument and or the key and the value of that argument, and it's going to place it in this parameters dictionary. So now we're almost done. We just need to actually make the request. So we can do that by doing return requests.get, and it needs a URL, which we've already created up here, and it needs parameters, which 
we already have. So one of the arguments for request.get params and unfortunately that's what I've named the variable too. So params equals param. And we also, before I forget, we're also gonna want the JSON data of this request. We don't want just the request because without this JSON, it's just gonna return like response 200 or whatever. So yeah, I pasted in my API key and we're gonna test this and we can do that by doing git price history. And we're going to do symbol equals apple and see what other things we can put in here. We're gonna go to TD Ameritrade and this page, it has all the parameters that you could possibly use. And it gives you a small description of what each one does. So we're just gonna do something simple like get the minute data for the past day. To do that, we're going to come over here. We're gonna look at period, the number of periods to show. So for an example, a two day, one minute chart, the values would be period two. So we only want one day, so we're just gonna have a period of one. We're going to have a frequency type um, of a minute. And looks like we don't need frequency, we don't need end date, we don't need start date, because all of that will be by default if we just give it a period and a frequency type. And a period type, we also need the period type of a day. So what that would look like is period, period, equals one period type equals day frequency type equals minute and that should honestly work we're just gonna run it and see what we get oh well I, <laughs> I didn't get anything but that's because we need to put that in a print so that's gonna return that so let's see what that gives us so I brought it down here and that's perfect. We can see that it gives us a JSON return of candles. It gives us open, high, low, close, volume, date time for the whole day. And each one of these is a minute interval. From here, you can do whatever you want with this data. Just keep in mind that all this data, it's wrapped in this uh, candles key right here. So you're gonna need to pull from the candles before you pull from anywhere else. But anyways, I think that's gonna do it for part one. If you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. That's easily the best way to connect with me since YouTube comments are kind of iffy. Sometimes I see them, sometimes they're invisible. All in all, it's just, it's just not helpful. <laughs> I also post awesome researchy stuff like this. Ooh, secret BitMEX whale has multiple accounts on the leaderboard. I found that with data collection and correlation. But anyways, thanks to my subscribers. It really helps motivate me, make, motivate me to make these videos. But that's going to do it for now, and I'll see you guys next time.